I happened to have made a breakthrough, and uh, it was something that didn't have the importance of my game theory work. I couldn't get a Nobel Prize for it, but it was pure mathematics. I found that manifolds could be represented algebraically. My original idea was to incorporate two-person cooperative games, the whole subject matter, in the thesis. Yeah. And then the, the poker game could have been put there at greater length. You had one good idea, the equilibrium point. Yeah, with the two-person cooperative, it's always more controversial. The equilibrium point, in, in a sense, is simply a mathematical discovery. Mm -hmm. And such a thing cannot be argued about. Let me turn to the three proofs that you've given of the equilibrium point existence. The third proof, which I think is the most elegant one, it's kind of a dynamic learning proof in which the, the players react to what the other people are doing and adjust their strategy and the fixed points of this transformation are the equilibrium points, and so you can get away with the Brouwer theorem. It can be interpreted that way, but technically it's just a way of finding a device where something which is not the mapping that you immediately think of, a modified thing, works very well and provides the continuous mapping for which you use to have a fixed point, and then the fixed point is immediately what you want. There's no limiting process. I know that Nobel people were very happy when they found out that in your thesis there is the mass interpretation. Can you elucidate a little bit what the interpretations are? In the, the poker game example, you have individuals who are playing. But uh, it could be that playing in a certain position of the game is is simply a, a typical person from a certain population. A population could have effectively a population strategy. And this is a natural way for an, an equilibrium to develop. It doesn't have to be remembered, it doesn't have to be repeated play, but it can be a, a typical play. Now, as a prescription, if I have players and I tell them, play this Nash equilibrium, it's self-enforcing because no player can improve on it. It's not completely enforcing. Yeah. I mean, there is an equilibrium, yeah. but, um, well, if you started to play differently, then other people might react, and then you might do even better. That's I mean, right. it, it, the equilibrium is not necessarily stable. Like many, many people, I greatly admire your work on embeddings. I wonder if you could tell me how you got started thinking about it. It was an unknown area. I didn't realize that, and I said, you know, this doesn't seem so difficult. This yes. should be possible. My intuition was correct. I mean, I had no basis for saying that I could, I could do that, I, but I did start to work on it. You were warned off this problem, it's too hard, don't work on it? I may have been warned off it, but uh, it would be a natural thing. It, it's not something that a, 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 a professor wouldn't give it to a thesis student. Does your own work make you feel happy? Do you look back on it and say, wow, look what I did? I'm looking from the point of view of someone who's still working. I hope I can continue to do comparable work.